Greetings, mind crafters, and welcome to another, uh, just, I don't know, just another exciting discussion. I'm so stoked to do these. I can't tell you all how grateful I am that, that I have such amazing listeners because um, this is so much fun for me. So anyway, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and uh, Giovanni, actually, Giovanni's out in the deck in the drizzle. He's on Squirrel Watch. This goes on all day long. He hasn't caught one yet, but... You never know. He's got hope, and it's it, it's looking good for him right now. But there's a couple of them that just dry, it goes on all day long. I just drive him a little crazy. But anyway, so he'll probably be in, in a minute. Right now, he's busy protecting the house from from squirrels, um, real ones, not the ones in my head. So what I wanted to talk about today was uh, is right because it's current present tense is seven tips for living a more chill existence <laughs> seven tips and i might even do a part two to this if i'm inspired i don't know i'll have to see how it goes but the first one is there is no magic to happiness oh i should have brought my wand out of the jeep my wand is in the jeep it's usually in my office but i had to, i know it was graduation at champagne that's what i was using it for all right anyway so there is no magic wand waving for happiness happiness is the magic happiness is the magic and here's the deal, it is a choice, and no matter who's diagnosed with what and whatever life circumstances, it's harder for some than others, and that's just how it is. However, it is still a choice. And so, and so, in fact, it can take courage to be happy, quite honestly, because first of all, it's an uphill push a little bit. We've talked about it with the primal wiring towards the negative. And also there can be happiness pressure, and there's all this stuff going on in the world and all that, it can take, it can and does take courage, and it also takes effort, follow-through, commitment, just like being a good parent. So there is no magic to happiness. Happiness is the magic. Also, Sean Aker, someone I'd love to do lunch with someday, author of The Happiness Advantage, will also say that same thing with, with, with uh, success. We've got it backwards. It's not once I'm successful, I'll be happy. It's once I'm truly happy, only then can I be successful. Okay, next one. Stop efforting. Efforting, efforting, it's a, just a verb, right? And so it doesn't mean be a slacker and sit on the couch and have a, a big sandwich and don't move and expect it all to everybody to do everything for you. No, what I'm talking about is realize that the ratio is an illusion. If I, it, and it doesn't mean don't do it, like if you're brand new, you're 22 or three years old and you're just out in the world and to prove yourself a little bit, okay. We're talking about the extreme end, to have this mindset that if I continue to kill myself, and burn the candle at both ends for a really long time, I'll be living in a McMansion on the, on the beach someplace. I mean, and that, and that, not to say that can't happen, though you can get there with, with, without the killing yourself, wasting your life minutes part, where you're just, you know, you know, um, living to work and that's, you know, that sort of thing. And there's a really, oh, just coming to me right now. And I don't remember his name. It's in, uh, it's his book right here. Nope. Wait, wait, maybe. Ah. Yes. I did not even plan that, actually. Greg McCowan's book, Effortless, is amazing. And uh, totally unplanned. I, and his other one, Essentialism, is somewhere floating around here. But anyway, in his book, in the very beginning, he talks about a young professional who had, was just efforting, efforting, efforting. And uh, he just, for years, and he and climbing, climbing, and putting, you know, 80 hours a week staying staying late after his boss had left being there early before his boss had arrived and um you know missing lots of of things with family you know lots and lots of things with family and the long story made shorter is the company went belly up and none of it mattered in the end and he sort of realized that that level of efforting which is what we're talking about is a gigantic waste of life minutes because you can you can get you can get to here Less but better, that's what we're saying. That's, that's, that's uh, Greg McGowan's whole thing with effortless is, is best, uh, sorry, less, less but better. Because when we learn, you know, to focus on what's essential, which is, which is his first book, we get in the habit of zoning in instead of being, becoming better at what we're average at, we become great at what we're good at. Our energy is focused, right? Where the energy, where the energy, where, where the energy, sorry. Yeah, where the energy goes, how's that go? Oh, sorry. Where the focus goes, the energy flows. That's what I meant to say. So we're honing in. And so it's a more efficient 
way to achieve what we want to achieve versus just this, you know, throwing it all at the wall over and over and over like on autopilot. So stop efforting so much. Stop killing yourself. Okay. Third one, acknowledge contrast and give people a break. Okay, so this is a little, can be a tough sell when we're in that and people are getting snark at work and there's, you know, politics happening at work and the politics are everywhere. I certainly know that too. And Champlain's an awesome place to be for sure. And there's just politics everywhere. I mean, it's just how it is. So when there's a little contrast, um, realize that this is part of your story. It doesn't give people a pass. Sometimes there needs to be a conversation. Though if we get that, that there's contrast, we can kind of, kind of like, you know, the waves thing with John Kabat-Zinn with thoughts. Waves are just gonna keep happening, so learn to surf. The contrast in life is gonna keep happening, so we don't need to be surprised when it does. We can kind of learn to roll with it a little better. And the part with give people a break does not mean give them a pass, but maybe, or and maybe to see that they've got stuff going on in their life too. And maybe what they're presenting to is not their best selves. Again, it doesn't mean give them a pass. It might be the level of needing a conversation or it might be a level of just letting it go. Everybody's got something that they are dealing with. Um, okay, what does that one say? I can't read my own. Not, oh yeah, okay. Live without, a, live without attachment. I've talked about that a lot. It's like super Buddhist. And to, to detach, it doesn't mean I don't give a SHIT. It doesn't mean that. I might mean that, actually, but it doesn't have to mean that. You can love somebody with your whole heart and detach from their behavior. It happens a lot with addiction. I'm thinking of like uh, parents with, with teenager or young adult kids who still need them, but they're into some really dangerous behavior and the parents are still supporting them or they're, they're, they're detaching because they've gotten kind of healthy with how they help them. That's just a, an example. But we can detach from outcome all day long. It doesn't involve that such an extreme example. We can detach from the snarkies at work. We can detach from the snarkies in our family. We can smile and say, pass the, you know, pass the beans, please, and not be taking anything personally. And they don't even know that they're not, we're not giving them any, any, any energy. And also not to attach. So that's deta detaching from, you know, pricklies. Pricklies, the behavior of pricklies, I should separate person from problem. Also outcomes, just in general, if you want things to be a certain way, it's best to focus on the feeling that you want to achieve, the basic general feeling and just reside in that place rather than having all the absolute details because when we have those expectations, it sets us up for disappointment, plus it just doesn't work that way. So we're better off you know, putting that desire out there, really out there, feeling what it feels like to get a promotion, to, get, to land the ideal dream job, to have that wonderful, amazing person come into our lives, um, that maybe that soulmate, to have that, you know, ex that travel adventure you've been longing for your whole life, but without having it so specifically mapped out, kind of be open to what the universe wants to bring you and be grateful for every little thing along the way. Remember to celebrate the breadcrumbs, that's huge. Being grateful for the little ones, you know, uh, small steps lead to big success. And that's how they turn the, the abundance faucet on is by being grateful for all the little parts. Okay, the next one is always be generous. Uh, I am right now thinking of the wheel. Oh, and I'm also doing a little representation with St. Mike's here. My, under, my undergrad, uh, love St. Mike's, my first home. I absolutely love it there. I want my ashes buried there, actually. This is a little side, just a little side note. So the wheel, Father Vanda Wheel, we affectionately called him the wheel. And he has this, he has this insane laugh, like a hyena. I always wanted to get that for my ringtones on my phone. Uh, but anyway, when we used to go out in way back when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth and glaciers were shifting when I was in college, we used to go out to, to, to lunch at this place called Bove's in Burlington. It was dirt cheap and some of the best Italian food ever. It would rival Little Italy in Manhattan. It was so good, it was so cheap. And each time, you know, we would all chip in, students all chip in, and, and Father Vanderweel, the wheel, would like, today's scale, I don't know how much, back then it was literally like 350 a meal. It was back in the 80s, right? Um, and he would throw like, without exaggeration, a hundred percent tip. And he would just always be generous, always be generous. In that situation, it wasn't even that much money. Even then it wasn't that much money. And they obviously got smart because I think they moved their location or something. Now they've got bowl spaghetti sauces sold everywhere. So there must've been a little stepping stone. Wow, was that good food? And he used to have such a thing for garlic. It was like oozing out of his pores. Anyway, always be generous. It does come back to you. 
It just does. It's like a universal rule or something. I mean, every religion across the globe pretty much says that. But you just know if you've, I'm a fabulous 58. If you've lived long enough, you know that that's just how it works. The more you, the more you just give, 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 it's that reap, sow thing. You know, the more you give, it just automatically, now I'm not saying that's the reason to do it. The reason to just do it because it's just a good, nice thing to do. Though it does come back at you in all different ways, um, which is so cool. So always be generous. Um, choose being right over being kind. That's number six. I forgot to say the numbers, but anyway, we're on number six. Choose being right over being sorry. Wrong way. I just said that totally backwards. Yikes. Um, choose being right over being kind. I just said it again. Oh my God. I think I'm having like a little like the fog, the, the, the um, smog out there from the whole Canada thing is getting to me. Let's try this one more time. She was being kind over being right. I'm not even going to delete it and fix it and edit it. I could, but I'm not going to. Why? Because we call that human, and I'm, I'm a big fan of role modeling that. When, I'm, when I make mistakes with my Minecrafters in, you know, at, uh, in the college course I teach, I don't, you can't really delete in person, but I just say, well, we call that human. In fact, I, was, I did a big thing with Penn State about a year ago, and I think I just made a little flub on a PowerPoint. I said, we call that human, and they loved it. Everybody clapped. So there you go. So choo choose being kind over being right. And some people say choose being happy over being right, and that works too because, I mean, there are, of course, there are exceptions to everything. If somebody saying something racist or something, that's like an, or homophobic or anti-Semitic or anti-anybody, I mean, that's, that's a whole other ball of wax, right? They need to be, something needs to be said there. Um, though if it's just a situation, if I read this article and it's more current and I need it and the brain does this and, 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 and no it doesn't, it does this and, and, and who cares? Let them be right even if they're wrong. What difference does it make really? It doesn't. It's not our job on earth to educate them. It really isn't. With the exception of the anti-people comments because then it kind of is. But the regular conversations we have, who cares? What? Is it going to matter in a week or a month or 10 years? No. Take the high road, because you'll be better off for it. Um, and then uh, let number seven is look through, oh, I love this. This one I have to give Wayne Dyer a shout out here. Look through, like, so rather than looking, rather than looking for miracles, I'm paraphrasing him, him a little bit, look through the lens of everything is miraculous. And this is, this is a wonderful way to spend your day, your life minutes, because, you know, pick anything sunsets and uh, we have a family of turkeys living in the backyard someplace very close because they're out there almost every day and there's and there's the mom and the dad and all the little babies and I mean look at that and then there's human babies and puppies and the ocean and the Grand Canyon and go across the world with all the many miracles and then the stuff you just witness witnessing good people doing good things all the time I mean just out in the world stuff that you other that you just happen to fall on it oh my god I mean, it's just miracles absolutely everywhere plus it's super fun when you see little kids just their spirits just just move you know they start dancing and they're only two and it it's just like such an aha moment every time i see that because spirit geez music truly moves the spirit because the evidence of of that is when children who can barely walk or talk are moving to it you know miraculous and then there's all the big stuff so it's just and when things just go well in your day and you know and then it can be the huge stuff like healing and all that so we look through a lens of, of life in general being miraculous that's a great way this is a great way to spend your life minutes that's all i can say about that um oh, i wrote bumblebees and flowers i just filmed one the other day i mean i watched her just it is oh just absolutely spectacular I, I got really close and she allowed me to get really close with this with the camera and i actually posted it on on facebook as a gratitude thing because I, you watch their little itty bitty legs and just clinging and that she was upside down defying gravity. I feel like that I should sing the song from Wicked right now, but that wouldn't be pretty. So, so she was like hanging upside down, doing her thing and sucking the nectar out and doing all that. And what a miracle, you know, up close and personal. Just amazing. And that the bees just know what to do, the flowers know what to do to grow each year. I mean, all of it, their DNA, just knows what to do on the smallest of level. It's just wild. Okay, so those are the seven tips for a more chill life. I'll just repeat them quickly. There is no magic to happiness. Happiness is the magic. Stop efforting, meaning stop killing yourself. You wanna do, 
You want to do um, less but better. That's how. That's what Greg McCallan says. Acknowledge the contrast and give people a break because everybody's going through something. Doesn't mean they're giving them a pass, but give them a break. Live without attachment. Not No attachment to outcome if you can help it. Always be generous. It comes back to you. Uh, choose being kind over being right. Look through the lens of everything is miraculous, and that is it. Seven ways to a more chill existence. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from my living room in Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.